episode 19. Welcome to the Live Fit Podcast with your host, Glenn Johnson. Today you will learn techniques for permanent weight loss and improved overall health. All right, it is time once again for the Live Fit Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Johnson, and this is episode 19. Today I'm going to show you how to start losing weight with six easy steps. But before I go into that, I want to give you the answer to last week's question of the week. I asked, to avoid weight loss plateaus, it is best to change your program, A, every six to eight weeks, B, every three months, C, every six months, or D, never. Well, most of you probably already know for maximum improvement of your muscles, it is best to change your routine every month to six weeks. Definitely eight weeks would be the tops. You don't want to do the same routine over and over and over again for more than two months. I usually recommend closer to a month. So often I get people coming up to me and telling me that they're very frustrated, they're not gaining any strength, they're not losing any weight, and I ask them some questions and one of those is what they do for weight training for resistance training and they tell me they have this nice routine that they do three times a week and it takes them about an hour and they work all these muscles all the muscles of the body which superficially sounds great but then I say oh you've been doing the same routine for how long and they tell me a year or two five years sometimes and I say well that's the problem. Your body becomes very efficient at what it does most frequently. Therefore, you need to change your routine frequently. Keep your muscle guessing, muscle confusion. Keep it guessing so it never knows quite what's going on. Plus, you've probably felt sore before, and that, you, that soreness usually accompanies when you do something new or when you step it up and do something a little bit harder. That's the muscles adapting to the challenge you're giving it. So if they're used to it and it's not a challenge, they're not really capable of doing any more than that. They're just capable of doing that one thing. So if you're constantly challenging them, then they will rise to meet that challenge and they will develop and they will grow and you will get more benefit from your workout in less time and you will also experience a higher metabolism. I'd like to thank everybody who's left comments and reviews on Stitcher and iTunes. I have complete show notes at livefitpodcast.com where you can read notes about this podcast and all others. I also have resources and articles that you might find interesting. Okay, let's get on with the show and learn how you can start losing weight right now with six easy steps. I'm going to help you start losing weight today with these six tips. One, eat a protein first thing in the morning. Two, take a walk two to three times a day. Three, do some sort of resistance training. Four, drink a gallon of water. Five, eat every three hours. And six, eat balanced. All right, let's go into it with a little more detail. The first one, eat a protein first thing in the morning within 30 minutes of rising. What might that be? I don't know, an egg, some cottage cheese, protein powder, whatever you like. You want to keep the carbs down. Um, A food that does not have very much carbs in there. You could have some peanut butter because that's a good protein and fat source. Not terribly high on carbs, so that would work. Why do you want to do this? It helps you burn energy. It gives your body something to eat right away, right after you wake up, so your body knows it's not starving any longer. It doesn't have to be in starvation mode. Plus, you're giving it protein, so it doesn't have to dissolve your body's muscle for the fuel to get you moving. I'll get into why you don't want to eat carbs at the end with number six. I like to eat an egg first thing in the morning. I usually have an egg with a a cup of coffee and some coconut cream in it. And I find that works really well. It sustains me for two, three hours. um, And then I'll go ahead and have my second breakfast that is more balanced. I'll get into balance later on. But the point is, eat a protein first thing when you wake up. You want to give your body some food within 30 minutes of waking. It doesn't have to be a huge amount. One egg is really all it takes. Number two. Take a walk at least three times a day. Short little walks are great. You can take a five or a 10 minute walk here and there, wake up first thing in the morning, go for a walk, but you should throw in a longer 45 minute or so walk at least once a day. Get out there, get your calorie burn up, 
walk briskly, walk with purpose. This will improve your endurance. It'll increase your metabolism. Think about it. Your ancestors used to do it. All of your ancestors up until about um, 150, 200 years ago, maybe even less, used to walk daily for long periods of time. This helps increase your blood circulation, your lymphatic circulation, and your synovial fluid circulation. I don't know if you're very aware of this, the lymphatic system, but that is your sewage system of the body, and it does not have a pump of its own. It does not have a heart to pump it around. It requires movement. Your body has to move. Breathing does it, but also movement. Walking with arm movement will help pump that trash, the waste from your body back into the bloodstream so it can be filtered out through the liver and get out of your body like that. Also, movement increases your blood circulation. Yes, you have a heart to do that, but it doesn't get into all the little nooks and crannies um, by itself. It really needs movement to push it around. I like to take a walk first thing in the morning. I get up and go for a, even a five-minute walk around the block. It's fresh, clean, crisp air. It gets some blood circulating to my hips and to my back and to my legs. My arms move around. It wakes me up. It makes me feel really alive and vitalized. It's a great opportunity to think about the day. What do I have to do today? Put things in order. Get my head straight. Get my affairs straight. It's really a great way to start the day. Later, I'll take another walk after lunch. It's a good way to help your digestion. It also mobilizes those calories you just ate. Now, this is especially important after a large meal because if you just eat a big meal, it's going to sit there in your stomach, and all this blood's going to go to your intestines, working at digesting all this food that's in there. Meanwhile, it leaves the rest of your body a little bit starved for blood. But if you get up and you walk around, a, you're using the calories. You need the calories. So instead of the food in your stomach being broken down and being stored as fat, it goes into your bloodstream, circulates around, and goes to the muscles that are using it. Now your body's saying, hey, we're burning energy. We need to put this energy to good use. So it's going to use it and utilize it right away. Depending on how big the meal is and how long the walk is, I'm not saying you're going to burn all of it but you're going to burn a much larger portion than you would if you just sat around and were really lazy and lethargic and even fell asleep. The point is, take a walk frequently, two, three times a day. Have one of them be a long one. The others can be nice and short if you want. Your body will work like a well-oiled machine. Number three, do some sort of resistance training daily if possible. What would that be? Something really simple. It could be push-ups, lunges, squats, anything with dumbbells. This stimulates muscle growth, or at the very least, it stimulates the muscles to maintain their size and their strength. You want to give the muscles some stress or they will wither away. They will atrophy. They will shrink. If you work hard enough, they'll grow. But if you just give it what they need to maintain, then they will do that. This keeps your metabolism up or increases your metabolism. It causes the muscles to grow. That protein you ate for breakfast now has a use. It will go into the muscles and keep them alive and stimulated. If you can work resistance into your daily life, I like to wake up and do a set of push-ups, some squats, and some Superman. I find that very beneficial for starting my day. Then I go out and take a walk after I get dressed. But that's what I do first thing in the morning and it's great. It's better than a cup of coffee. I'm a slow waker, and so I have a hard time getting out of bed. So what I do is I just sort of flop over and do a set of push-ups, just 10 push-ups, not a big deal. But that wakes me enough so I have my wits about me, and then I do those other things I just said. And then I have the coordination where I can get dressed and get ready for work, and then I go out and take a brisk little walk, and I'm ready to go. It is a good idea to do heavy weightlifting two, three times a week, the body weight exercises are great for maintenance and for waking up and increasing circulation, but I do highly recommend heavier weight training of a longer workout, 10, 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer depending on what you're doing. Probably three days a week would be ideal. Hit the gym, lift some heavy weights, really stress yourself, put your muscles to their max limit. Lift a weight that's so heavy you can only lift it maybe 8 to 10 times at the very most. You don't want to lift it more than 10 times. In other words, the weight shouldn't be light enough to allow you to lift it more than 10 times. That was number three, do resistance training daily. Number four, 
Drink a gallon of water daily. Drinking water throughout the day will keep your blood thinner. It'll help your circulation get into those tiny little nooks and crannies. This goes hand in hand with the movement because we need to have thinner blood so it can reach those tiny capillaries in the farthest reaches of your body, your extremities, your fingers, your toes, and even within the core of your body. We still need to have the blood thin enough so it doesn't turn into sludge and get really thick. It's easier for the heart to pump thinner blood. It transports the nutrients, the oxygen, the water, of course, and all the other nutrients that your body and your muscles need. So the thinner the blood, the easier it pumps it around. Also less chance of getting clogged up. Now, once again, drinking water first thing in the morning is vital. It's crucial for good health because while you've been sleeping, you've been losing water through your skin. Every time you exhale, you're losing water. Visiting the restroom before or after the night during sleep, you are losing water that whole time and you're probably not drinking it. So you are dehydrated. First thing, wake up, drink a glass of water. And then throughout the day, have water with you at all times. Drink it regularly. Here's a little tip that I like to give. If you're not using the restroom about every hour, you're probably not drinking enough. All right, let's move on to number five. Eat every three hours. Well, I first told you you should eat a protein within 30 minutes of waking up. Then you're going to want to eat about every three hours after that. You could eat a little bit sooner after your breakfast, but... Somewhere in that neighborhood, you don't want to go more than four hours without eating, for sure. So I like to stick with about three. Sometimes I go a little sooner, sometimes a little bit later. It depends on how big it was and what I'm doing. It can be anything you like. As long as it's not too big, you want to think of all the rest of the meals you're going to have throughout the rest of the day. But this allows you to feed your muscles, not your fat. You want to tell your body that food is prevalent and that it doesn't need to store it. For example, I eat two of every single meal. I have breakfast of eggs and coffee, and then I'll go about and eat another breakfast two or three hours later. I'll have a lunch around 11 o'clock. I'll have second lunch around 1.30 or so, and then 3.30 or 4, I have first dinner, and then later on in the evening, I will have second dinner. I've never been one of these people that say you should not eat after a certain time of day. First of all, that's ridiculous in that the person telling you that doesn't know what time you go to bed. And second of all, if you eat dinner at 6 o'clock and you're up till midnight, well, there's six hours without eating. And right now I'm telling you not to go more than three. Be smart about what you eat. But if you eat dinner at 6 o'clock, I would say around 9 o'clock, you're probably feeling really hungry. And instead of you beating yourself up about it and trying to avoid everything and then, and then collapsing and eating a big bowl of ice cream, just schedule that in. Plan that. What are you going to eat? Eat something smart. And that brings me to number six. Eat balanced. Every time you eat something, with the possible exception of breakfast, eat a balance of carbs, protein, and fat. Why? Because this keeps your blood sugar relatively level and stable. The problem with eating a, a carbohydrate by itself or a meal or a food that is high in carbohydrates is it raises your blood sugar level. Therefore, raising your insulin level. Insulin is known as the storage hormone. So when the blood sugar gets higher than it should be, above the limits that the body likes, insulin is secreted to bring it down storing that glucose. It'll first go to the muscle and the liver to be stored in there, but when those two areas are full, what do you think happens to it? It is stored as fat. Also, it takes the sugar or the glucose out of your bloodstream, and now it's too low. Now you feel hungry again and you need carbohydrates. And what does your body do when it needs glucose? It makes you crave some sort of carb. Sometimes it's gonna be in the form of sweets, it might be in the form of uh, potato chips, or but you are probably going to crave a carb of some sort. It might even be a liquid. It might be a smoothie, something that you think is healthy. Stay away from it. Eat a balance every time you eat. Every time, like I said, with the possible exception of breakfast. Consider every time you eat to be a meal. Forget about the word snack. Get that word snack out of your head. No matter the size, it's a meal. You might call it a mini meal if that helps you. 
If you're eating something that's only 100 calories, don't call it a snack. Call it a mini meal because it should still be balanced. Once again, eat a balance every time you eat something. I'm going to go over the six ways that you can start losing weight today. Eat a protein first thing in the morning. Take a walk two or three times a day. Do some sort of resistance training daily. Drink a gallon of water. Eat every three hours and eat a balanced meal or mini meal every time you eat. Those are my six tips. If you start these today and repeat them every single day, you will begin losing weight and you will notice a huge difference in your energy level and your health and your fitness. Thank you. Be well. Well, that concludes my show for today. Those are the six tips to help you start losing weight right now. I'd like to thank everybody for leaving ratings and review on iTunes and Stitcher. You can view complete show notes of this and every show, plus blog articles and some really cool resources at livefitpodcast.com. Now I'd like to give you this week's question of the week. The best way to get flat abs is to... A. Do ab exercises on a daily basis. B. Stop eating carbs. C. Skip breakfast. Or D. Lose overall body fat and hope your genes cooperate. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody for listening and visit me at livefitpodcast.com. See you there. You can find us at livefitpodcast.com. 